topic decoding voluntary liquidation forms actually these voluntary liquidation forms have been introduced by way of circular on 28th june 2024 by the ministry by the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india now to understand these forms uh, i think we need to first understand the uh, law of uh, voluntary liquidation as well as the voluntary liquidation process regulations so first i i, I will go through the uh, law as well as the voluntary liquidation process regulations and during those regulations the applicability of these uh, voluntary liquidation forms these are four forms only vl1 vl2 vl3 and vl4 so at the relevant places i will discuss these forms uh, through the ministry of corporate affairs side so let me start with my uh, ppt first so as per article 19 1g of the constitution of india because constitution of india provides that the right to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation trade or business to all the citizens subject to certain restrictions so citizen of india can start any uh, they have right to practice any profession or to carry any occupation or trade or business but subject to certain restrictions and this right provides them the business uh, to carry on the business the, this this right to carry on the business also includes the right to close it at any time depending upon the desire of the owner so the so so the state cannot uh, compel any citizen of india to continue any business which is against his will but this right is not absolute right this right is subject to certain restrictions now what is voluntary liquidation first we need to understand the uh, term voluntary liquidation voluntary liquidation is a self imposed winding up and dissolution of the company that has been approved by its shareholders such a decision will happen once an organization's leadership decides that company has no reason to continue so it is not a compulsory winding up by the order of the court so it is the self imposed winding up by uh, and dissolution of the company and it it has been approved by the shareholders of the company that is called voluntary liquidation so if the liquidation is compulsory liquidation then that has to be either uh, ordered by nclt um, in 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 the ibc uh, if the company doesn't get resolution plan in and in cirp or the resolution plan received by the company and that has been failed then the nclt can pass the order for liquidation of the company that is compulsory liquidation by the order of the court and its second one is under section 271 of the companies act 2013 so there are conditions where uh, there where, where 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 any contributory or any uh, the company can apply to the uh, nclt for uh, ordering the company to be wound up compulsorily the primary objective of the uh, voluntarily winding up primary objective of the voluntarily winding up is that the, the uh, that that to terminate its operations sell off its assets and dismantle its corporate structure this is the primary objective of the voluntarily liquidation that all the operations be terminated and all the assets be sell, sold out and dismantle the corporate structure means the the the, the uh, corporate structure from the uh, uh, from this ministry side that is dissolved so to ensure that the assets of the corporate person are distributed fairly among its creditors and shareholders in a systematic manner while also promoting a swift and efficient exit from the business so this is the primary objective of the voluntary liquidation so applicability of the provisions of the voluntary liquidations that has been provided earlier under the companies act 2013 section 304 to section 323 were dealing with the voluntary liquidation but they were not notified 
so they were not applicable applicable now section 255 of the ibc 2016 provides that companies act 2013 shall be amended in a manner specified in 11th schedule and 11th schedule says by virtue of the 11th schedule with effect from 15th november 2016 Various winding up provisions of the Companies Act 2013 were amended, and voluntary winding up sections under section under Companies Act 2013 were omitted, and the same have been same have been incorporated under IBC. So these provisions under section uh, section 3042 to 323 they have been uh, they, they have been omitted, and and the uh, and the and and the new provisions. Under the IBC have been introduced under Section fifty nine of the IBC. So now fifty nine sec Section fifty nine of IBC is only the section which is dealing with the voluntary liquidation of the corporate persons. And there are uh, IBBI voluntary liquidation process regulations which have been so Section fifty nine has been notified with effect from thirty thirtieth March two thousand seventeen. Uh, with effect from first April two thousand seventeen, and on the very next day on thirty first March twenty two thousand seventeen, IBBA notified IBBA voluntary liquidation process regulations two thousand seventeen with effect from first April two thousand seventeen. So the section fifty nine as well as the voluntary liquidation process regulations they have been notified and they have been made effective with effect from first April two thousand seventeen. Right. Now the definition of corporate person is what under section three subsection seven of IBC corporate person under the code means companies incorporated under the Companies Act two thousand thirteen or any other previous Companies Act means nineteen fifty six or any other previous Companies Act limited liability partnerships. This also comes under the definition of corporate person formed and registered under the LLP Act two thousand eight. And any other person incorporated with limited liability under any law for the timing in force, such as insurance companies, banking companies, electricity companies, supply companies, and other companies governed by special acts, but shall not include any service provider as defined under section three, subsection seventeen. So, if the if the company service provider company, financial service provider company, that company cannot be liquidated voluntarily, but If that company has surrendered all its uh, certificates, all all its licenses, and the company is not doing any business, then that company can also be wound up voluntarily under the provisions of the IBC. So now, any other person incorporated with limited liability under any law for the time being force means Section two, subsection B. Uh, uh, defines any other company governed by any special act for the time being in force, and section two, subsection D, defines any other body incorporated under any law for the time being in force as the central government may notify. So, this is the definition of corporate person under section three, subsection I B C. Because corporate person only can be. Wound up voluntarily under IBC, no other person. Section fifty nine, chapter five deals with the voluntary liquidation of the company. Conditions for voluntary liquidation are number one, a corporate person who intends to liquidate itself voluntarily. This section fifty nine says that if corporate person, corporate person means company, limited liability partnership, and any other person. Uh, uh, which we have discussed under section three, subsection seven, right? Who intends to liquidate itself voluntarily and has not committed any default means the company that 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 the corporate person has not committed any default. Default default definition is given uh, under the IBC, which I will discuss now. May initiate voluntary liquidation proceedings. So if a corporate person Who intends to liquidate itself voluntarily and has not committed default may initiate voluntary liquidation proceedings. Now, the definition of default is non-payment of debt when whole or part of or installment of the amount of debt has become due and payable and is not repaid. 
by the debtor or the corporate debtor as the case may be that is called default. So if any corporate person has made any default, then the corporate, corporate person cannot uh, be liquidated voluntarily. Now, what is debt? Debt means a liability or obligation in respect of a claim which is due from the from any person and includes a financial debt and operational debt. So this is this is the definition given under section three, subsection eleven of the uh, IBC. That debt means any liability or obligation in respect of a claim which is due from any person and includes a financial debt and operational debt. Both debts are included. Now the prerequisites of initiation of voluntary liquidations are given under section 59 subsection 3 and regulation 3 of the voluntary liquidation process regulations 2017. A declaration from the majority of directors of the company or designated partners of the limited liability partnership or individuals constituting governing body in case of other corporate uh, persons duly verified by an affidavit that, that a declaration must be by the majority of uh, the persons and duly verified by the affidavit that they have made full inquiry into the affairs of the corporate person and formed an opinion that either CP has no debt or it will be able to pay its debts fully out of the sale proceeds of its assets to be sold in liquidation. So they have to give this declaration with affidavit that uh, the CP has no debt or the CP will be able to pay its debt in full. The corporate person is not being liquidated to defraud any person. This, uh, this, this uh, declaration has, is also to be written in the declaration and the no, third one is with, which has been included in the, in, the, in the provisions with effect from 31st January 2024 that CD has made sufficient provision to meet the obligations arising on account of pending matters before statutory authorities. So these declarations have to be made by the majority of directors or majority of uh, designated partners of LLP or the individual constituting the governing body duly verified by an affidavit so, so, so that this is the prerequisite of the initiation of voluntary liquidation. Such declaration shall be accompanied with the following documents. With this declaration, they will have to enclose these following documents. Number one, the audited financial statements and record of business operations of the corporate person for the previous two years. So two years financial statements and record of business operations that is required to be enclosed with the declaration or the period since incorporation suppose company is incorporated within two years not more the company is not in operation is that has been incorporated uh, not more than uh, two years less than two years then the company will have to enclose the financial statements and record of business operations for that period whichever is later right and the valuation report of the assets of the corporate person, if any, from the registered valuer. So if the company is having assets uh, in the company, then valuation report is required to be submitted along with the declaration. And disclosure about the pending proceedings or assessments before statutory authorities and pending litigations in respect of CT. So these documents are required to be enclosed with the declaration duly verified by an affidavit. Now declaration to list each of the debts. So when the declaration is, is being given by the, uh, by the majority of directors or the designated partners or the other persons of the governing body, then declaration shall list each debt of this corporate person as on the date of making the declaration and state that CP will be able to pay all its debts in full from the proceeds of the assets to be sold in liquidation. So in declaration, the, major, the, 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 the corporate person that has to uh, list each, each debt and the date of making the, uh, on the date of, as on the date of making the declaration. And the, this also has to be stated in the declaration that the CP will be able to pay its debts in full from the proceeds of the assets to be sold in liquidation. 
Now, within four weeks from such declaration, suppose the declaration has been made today. So, within four weeks from today, there shall be a special resolution of the members because members are the owners of the company uh, otherwise. So, the permission of the members, the owners of the company, because directors are on the driving seat, the members of the company, the shareholders of the company, they are the, they are the main uh, uh, owners of the company. So, they, so the, such dec the, within four weeks of making such declaration, there shall be a special resolution of the members. Special resolution means under the Companies Act 2013, special resolution means with the majority of 75% of the total uh, total uh, members present in the meeting or the value of the uh, uh, persons present in the meeting or resolution passed by the special majority of the partners. So if the, if the uh, corporate person is uh, an LLP, then special majority is required for passing the resolution and contrib uh, ob ob oblique contributories Contributors definition is given in the uh, voluntary liquidation process re regulations. I will discuss in the next slide. Requiring the corporate person to be liquidated voluntarily and appointing an insolvency professional to act as liquidator. So liquid, though no other person other than the insolvency professional can be appointed as the liquidator of the company in voluntary liquidation. So two things are required to be given in this special resolution that corporate person is to uh, is to be liquidated voluntarily and the Ms. mr so and so and mrs so and so miss so and so is being appointed as the insolvency profession professional to, uh, uh, to be a pro, uh, uh, is appointed as the liquidator to uh, uh, liquidate the uh, uh, to liquidate the company now the resolution of the members partners contributories of the CP requiring the CP to be liquidated voluntarily as a result of uh, expiry of the period of its duration, if any, fixed by the articles or constitutional documents. So these are the two provisions. First provision says special resolution or resolution passed by the special majority or a resolution of the members or partners or contributor. Resolution means simple resolution with 51% majority of the corporate person requiring the CP to be liquidated voluntarily as a result of expiry of the period of liquidation, uh, sorry, period of duration. So if a corporate person has been incorporated for a certain period, so if that period is going to be ended, then simple major, uh, simple resolution that has to be passed by the members for uh, liquidating the company voluntarily, but this must be fixed by the articles or constitutional documents. So that duration that has that must be written in the constitutional document for how much period the company will be uh, in uh, in operation. On occurrence of any event in respect of which articles or constitutional document provide that CP shall be dissolved as the case may be. So if it is also written in the constitutional document. So in case of uh, company constitutional document is memorandum and articles of association. In case of LLP, LLP agreement, and in case of other, so there, there must be a memorandum and articles of association of other companies. So if certain occurrences that have been written in the, uh, this, in the constitutional document and that has happened, so the members can pass the uh, resolution with simple majority and uh, to, for liquidating the company voluntarily and then appointing an insolvency professional to act as liquidator. Now, in case CP owes any debt to any person, suppose there are creditors in the company to whom the company, the corporate person has to pay, then the creditors representing two third in value of the total debt shall approve the resolution with seven, within seven days of such resolution. Suppose res special resolution has been passed tomorrow and within seven days from tomorrow, then the resolution that has to be approved by the two-third major to two-third in value of the total debt of the creditors. Now, occurrence of an event means what we have discussed that uh, on occurrence of event, which has been mentioned in the uh, constitutional document, 
then the the members may pass the simple majority for uh, liquidating the company voluntarily the entity was formed with specific objective and now it has been fulfilled so if the entity has been formed with specific objective and at that objective has been fulfilled then the members may pass the uh, the or uh, the simple resolution to liquidate the company voluntarily so such as SPV, spe uh, special purpose vehicle. So spe uh, in many of the cases, special purpose vehicles that they, they, they have been in, companies have been incorporated as SPV for uh, uh, taking tender of some, uh, so, uh, to, to, to construct some uh, bridge or, or, or some uh, road, road construction work or any other construction work. After completion of that, the company is closed. So, so this is called occurrence of an event that that the purpose for which the uh, corporate person that has been incorporated now that has been fulfilled. Now it is to be closed, and that for that purpose only a simple majority resolution that is required. It is provided by the articles that entity should be liquidated on occurrence of an event, and that event has occurred. So, if it, it is written in the articles that some. Uh, occurrence of event and that event has occurred, then corporate person is liable uh, that may, may can be closed by passing simple majority resolution. So it is unable to carry on any business. So if company is unable to carry on any business and company is has not made any default, then company and uh, corporate person can be liquidated or introduced. So contributory, which I have uh, discussed uh, just uh, two slides before, Contributories meaning as per regulation 2 subdivision B, contributory means a member of the company, partner of the limited liability partnership, and any other person liable to contribute towards the assets of the corporate person in the event of liquidation. So at the time of incorporation of the company, um, the, 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 there are clauses in the articles of association that these persons they have given declaration that they will be they will contribute towards the assets of the corporate person in the event of liquidation so that person is also comes under the definition of contributory resolution to be notified to roc and ibbi so when the resolution special resolution or the ordinary resolution which has been passed within 4 weeks from the date of declaration of solvency then the CP, this corporate person shall notify to ROC and IBVI about the resolution to liquidate the company within seven days of such resolution or subsequent approval by the creditors, which is required to be taken within seven days from the date of passing the resolution as the case may be. So CP and the uh, shall notify to ROC as well as IBVI within seven days of passing the resolution. Now, how to notify to the ROC? Special resolution that is required to be filed with the ROC in forum MGT 14, whether that is special resolution or simple resolution, that resolution is required to be filed with the ROC in forum MGT 14. Declaration of solvency, audited financial statements, record of business operations of the last two years and valuation report. These are required to be filed in forum GNL2. There are four two. These are forms which are given on the Ministry of Corporate Affairs site. Uh, so you, you can download and you can fill those form uh, on the website and uh, you can download and file the uh, file with the ROC. And how to notify to IBBI? By filing, filing form VL1, VL2, VL3 and VL4 as per the timelines given in circular number IBBI LIQ 742-2024 dated 28th June 2024. Now these forms have been notified uh, with effect from 28th June 2024. So uh, now uh, I'll discuss uh, uh, the uh, the form uh, VL1. Uh, now let me open the form VL1.
Now let me share the forms. Can you see these forms? Now you have to go to the dashboard and in on dashboard voluntary liquidation forms. So you will have to click here voluntary liquidation form and then VL1 form let me discuss uh, let me open the form first now this is from VL1 this is very small form and uh, name of the corporate debtor you will have to fill uh, the name of the corporate debtor SIN number LLPI number of the corporate debtor Industry sector, industry sector means in which uh, 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 this sector in which your uh, the the corporate data uh, is operating. You will have to select from the drop down, and then date of incorporation of the corporate data, registered email ID of the corporate data. So this is uh, the, the, here the registered email ID you will have to fill. Then details of the voluntary liquidation process. Date of declaration from majority of directors, partners, individuals constituting governing body of the corporate person under section 59.3a read with regulation 31a. So declaration from the majority of directors on which date that has been made, you will have to fill the date of declaration by, by the majority of directors, then date of resolution or special resolution passed by the members, partners, contributory of the corporate person, you will have to fill that date. Of passing the resolution, data of approval, if any of the resolution, special resolution by the creditors, if creditors, companies having creditors, then the, 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 the date of approval of the resolution or special resolution by the creditors representing two third in value of the debt of the corporate person. Then paid up share capital uh, of the uh, corporate person. Uh, if that is in numerical value, then you will have to uh, fill numerical value. If that is by limited by guarantee, then you will have to fill limited by guarantee. Assets as on liquidation commencement date. So the you will have to fill the amount of the assets as on uh, liquidation commencement date and debt payable as on liquidation commencement date. So how much if the assets are supposed 1 lakh rupees and debt is 20 lakh, 20,000 rupees, then you will have to fill accordingly. The net worth of the Corporate person, you will have to fill net worth of the corporate person here. Year of which the latest balance sheet of the corporate person is available. So we will have to fill the uh, year from the drop down uh, option. Then you will have to preview and submit. You can submit through e sign and you can also submit through digital signatures. So So this was from VL1. Now I'll share, I'll start uh, again my PPT. Okay. Now the advantages of filing the form VL1 to VL4 is what? boosting the efficiency and effectiveness of voluntary liquidation process because earlier we used to uh, uh, inform the IBBI through emails 
we had no other uh, forms we, we we had no other uh, via or media through which we can we, we were able to file the information and, uh, and file file the do, uh, documents with ibbi only through emails and uh, earlier there was uh, the, the, there was a media to file uh, the documents with uh, roc and which I have discussed that uh, special resolution that is required to be filed in form MGT 14 and other documents are required to be filed in form GL2. But so far as concerned about IBBI, there was no such, there were no such uh, uh, forms. So which we can, uh, uh, we, could, we, could, we could have uh, filed the information with IBBI. Now I know the IBBI with effect from 28 June now notified these forms. So after the uh, notification of these forms, now the uh, liquidator, liquidators have not required to file any information through emails. Only through these forms, you you uh, you can uh, file the information with IBBI. Now, advantages are about that boosting the efficiency and effectiveness of voluntary liquidation process because these are the uh, you can say uh, the 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 compulsory forms which are required to be filled and filed. Allowing liquidators to conveniently access uh, access and submit forms online, reducing delays in, uh, and enhancing the efficiency, decreasing the chances of errors and omissions, ensuring more accurate and reliable information. So, so that the chances of errors and omissions they must be decreased, and then you know, to ensure more accurate and reliable information, these forms have been introduced. Now, filing of form VL1 to VL4 for foregoing v, uh, the, uh, the, uh, all the cases, voluntary liquidation process cases, in which no application for dissolution has been filed. Only form VL1 and VL2 are to be filed, and the last date for filing the forms uh, uh, is 30th September 2024. So, if there are ongoing cases, so if you have any uh, any assignment in ha in hand and that that is ongoing uh, uh, case then in which no application for dissolution has been filed with ncrt till now then you will have to file only two forms vl1 and vl2 vl2 i will discuss later on uh, that are required to be filed and the last date for filing form vl2 is 30th september 2024 where application for dissolution has been filed, but order has not been passed by NCLT. Means still it is, uh, the proceedings are going on with NCLT. Then forum VL1, VL2 and VL3, these three forms are required to be filed. And the last date for filing these forms is 30th September 2024. Now where order of the dissolution has been passed by the adjudicating authority, NCLT. Then all forms VL1, 2, 3, and 4 are required to be filed. And the last date of for filing these forms is 30th September 2024. Means these are the, 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 the last date is 30th September 2024 for all cases. So you will have to file these forms till 30th September 2024. So in my uh, in, in my case, uh, I have to got the order for three uh, corporate persons for uh, dissolution of the uh, corporate person. So I have to file all the forms VL1, VL2, VL3 and VL4 till 30th September 2024. And for those uh, cases uh, in, in which the application for dissolution has been filed, but order has not come till now, then three forms are required to be filed. That is VL1, VL2 and VL3. So and but if no but if still voluntary liquidation process is going on and no application for dissolution has been filed only two forms are required to be filed that is vl1 and vl2 now if any ip do not comply with the aforesaid provisions then he or she shall be liable as per the applicable provisions of the code and regulations made there under for failure to file the requisite forms along with the relevant information and records Inaccurate and incomplete information if you file, then an oblique or records filed in or along with the form, then you are also liable under the provisions of the code. 
So accurate information and complete information and timely filing of these form that is mandatory. Now liquidation commencement date. Liquidation commencement date is what? Liquidation shall be deemed to have commenced from the date of passing the resolution or subsequent approval of the resolution by two third in value of the creditors. So that is that will be treated as the late the liquidation commencement date in case of voluntary liquidation under section 59 subsection 5 and regulation 3 sub regulation 3 of VMP regulations. Now application of chapter 3 and chapter 7. The provisions of section 35 and 253 of chapter 3 that is liquidation process of uh, the, the which is given uh, in uh, IBC and provisions of section 68 to 7, 77 of chapter 7 offenses and penalties shall apply to voluntary liquidation with such modification as may be necessary. So these provisions are also applicable upon the voluntary liquidation process. Now effect of liquidation regulation 4 says the CP shall cease to carry on its business from the liquidation commencement date. The, the, the liquid from the liquidation for means from the passing of the resolution, uh, special resolution or resolution or by the approval of the uh, creditors, the corporate person shall cease to carry on its business from the liquidation commencement dates except for the beneficial winding up of the, its business. The CP shall continue to exist until it is dissolved. So it will continue to exist uh, until it is dissolved by the order of NCLT and that order is required to be filed with the ROC and ROC will uh, the will, will uh, post the status of the corporate person as dissolved just like this in uh, one of my corporate persons that has been dissolved now the company status is dissolved under section 59 subsection A so it is the, so you will have to file the order of NCLT with the registrar of companies uh, and the registrar of company will change the status of the company as dissolved under section 59 subsection 8. Now appointment of liquidators regulation 5 says CP shall appoint insolvency professional as liquidator by passing the resolution and may be replaced by appointing another IP as liquidator by passing the resolution SR or um, SR means special resolution or as per section 59.3c which we have discussed earlier. So the liquidator can be uh, only IP can be appointed as the liquidator by passing the resolution and that liquidator may also may be replaced by appointing another another IP. So only a IP can be appointed as the liquidator. Resolution appointing IP shall contain the terms and conditions of the appointment so there, there must be there, there must be a written in the resolution that are the terms and conditions of the appointment and remuneration payable to him. These, these are to be written in the uh, resolution. The remuneration payable to IP shall form part of the liquidation. So whatever the remuneration that is that, that is payable, payable to the uh, liquidator, that, that is part of the liquidation cost and shall be paid first as per section 53 of IBC. Uh, waterfall mechanism according to IP shall intimate IBVI about his appointment within seven days. So it is the duty of the IP to intimate IBVI about his appointment within seven days with effect from 5, 5th April 2022. Earlier it was three days. Now, now the time has been increased to seven days. Now eligibility for appointment as liquidator. The IP and every partner or director of IP entity must be independent. The independence test must be there. That, that liquidator who has been appointed must be independent of CP. Means that person should not be a related party to CP. Now test of independence is what? Eligible to be appointed as independent director on the board of CP as per section 149 of the Companies Act 2013. So this is the test of independence which has been provided under regulation 6 of VLP regulations. He should not be a related party of the 
corporate person and definition is given for related party under section 5 subsection 24 and 24a of ibc now he should not he he has not been an employee or or proprietor partner of the firm of auditors of cp cp's firm of, of cp's auditors uh, he should not be employee proprietor or partner in case of legal or consulting firm that has or had any transaction with cp contributing 10 percent or more of the gross turnover of such firm so if that uh, the, if 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 any any uh, ips uh, or consulting firm is a, is a, is taking less than 10% uh, of the total gross turnover of the uh, uh, transaction then that person can be appointed as uh, in uh, liquidated so at any time in the last 3 years so the, if that person has not been an employee proprietor partner of the firm of the auditors of cp or in case of legal consulting firm that has, has or had transaction with cp contributing 10% or more of the gross turnover of such firm at any time in the last three years. So these uh, the, the, so uh, these two provisions to be uh, read with that at any time in last three years. So if uh, the, they are uh, the related parties or, or they are the firm, uh, they, they are the employee proprietary partner of the auditors um, more than three years, then this uh, provision is not applicable. Now, eligibility for appointment as liquidity. If IP or IP entity of which he is a partner or director is restrained by the order of the board. So, if board means IBBI. So, if I, there is any order of the IBBI and that I, order is restraining any IP or IT, IP entity, then that person can not be appointed as uh, the 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 liquid liquidator uh, of for voluntary liquidation process. Liquidator shall disclose the existence of any pecuniary or personal relationship with the CP or any of its stakeholders as soon as he becomes aware of it to the board and the registrar. So any time during the liquidation process, he becomes to know that I uh, I have uh, the uh, the the uh, the pecuniary or personal relationship, then that that uh, IP shall disclose to the board and the registrar. The IP shall not continue as liquidator if IPE of which he is a director or partner, or any other partner or director of such IPE represents any other stakeholder in the same liquidation. That person cannot be appointed as liquidator. Now, liquidator has been appointed and what the, liquid, what the liquidator will do after uh, his or her appointment. The liquidator shall make a public announcement within five days from his appointment. So, timelines are very important. So, please follow the timelines if you uh, are a liquidator in voluntary liquidation process. So, within five days, you will have to make public announcement. Now, public announcement in two newspapers one in English and one regional language in wide circulation at the location of the registered office and principal office of the CP and any other location where the opinion in the opinion of the liquidator CP conducts material business operations. So at all places you will have to make publication in two newspapers if the corporate person is carrying business at these places. On the website of CP corporate person's website, you will have to make a, a public announcement on the website of the CP or any other website designated by the board for this purpose. If any, the purpose of announcement is what? Purpose of announcement is to call the stakeholders for submission of their claims as on liquidation commencement date and provide last date for submission of the claims which shall be 30 days from the liquidation commencement date. So here is 30 days. But in case of CIRP, that is 14 days. So you will have to be cautious that, that, that you will have to give 30 days time to provide the uh, to submit the claims by the uh, stakeholders. Now, firm VL1 as per uh, uh, circular IBBI uh, uh, 20 of uh, dated 28 June 2024. VN includes, I have already discussed VL1 uh, online details of the 
corporate data and details of the voluntary liquidation for a VL1 to be filed with IBBI side on or before. So if you are now uh, taking the assignment right now after the uh, introduction of these forms, then VL1 is required to be filed at IBBI side on or before the 10th day of the second month after the public announcement. So when you make the public announcement, then you will have to file the uh, form VL1 on or before 10th day of the second month means so in, suppose if you are uh, uh, making publication in the month of September, then you will have to file form VL1 before 10th October, second month before on or before 10th day. 10th day means 10th of the next month, 10th October, before 10th October, you will have to file form VL1. Now, how to form, file form VL1? Now, after login at IBBA site, go to dashboard, which I have, uh, I think, demonstrated to you. Select VL forms, fill reasons for VL and liquidation commencement date. After that, select VL1 and start filling form VL1. Now, notice to concerned assessing officer. Section 178 of the Income Tax Act 1961. So if you have made publication, you have been appointed as the liquidator of the company and made publication in, in two newspapers as per the as, as we have discussed, then you will have to give notice to the concerned assessing officer. Now a notice to appointment, notice of appointment is to be given to the concerned assessing officer within 30 days of the appointment. Now, within three months, assessing officer shall notify the amount of tax payable by the company. The liquidator can not part with any asset of the company without prior permission of principal, CCIT, CCIT, PCIT or the commissioner. Any contravention of the above provisions, liquidator shall be personally liable to pay the tax of the company. So, if you make any contravention of these provisions, you then you will be personally liable to pay tax of the company. Now the provisions of this section shall have effect notwithstanding anything contrary contained in any other law for the timing in force means these provisions are applicable even if the contrary provisions have been given in any other law except the provisions of the insolvency and bankruptcy code means Insol the provisions of insolvency and bankruptcy code will have the overriding effect upon these provisions. So these provisions are not applicable in case of voluntary liquidation or liquidation under IBC. But if the company is being liquidated, liquidated under section 271 of the Companies Act 2013, then these provisions are applicable. So uh, that is why I have discussed these provisions here because if uh, if, if, if the company is being liquidated and you have been appointed as the uh, provisional liquidator under the Companies Act 2013 with the which the provision says, then you will have to follow these provisions of the Income Tax Act. Registers and books of accounts which are required to be maintained by the uh, liquidator voluntarily, uh, under the voluntary liquidation process, Regulation 10 says, if books of accounts of the CP are incomplete as on the liquidation commencement date, then liquidator is required to complete them with all convenience speed. Regulation further says that liquidator shall keep receipts uh, for all the payments made or expenses incurred by him. So you will have to keep all the receipts for all making all the payments. Now these sir, are a small the... clarity, a small note, sir. Ji, ji, please, please. Can you go to previous slide where it has been shown that the EO has to intimate any amount payable within three months? Pardon? That the income tax officer has to send a uh, tax payable amount within three months is there, no? This, this, this slide? Ah, yes, sir. Within three months. Yes. So no, no, suppose... Actually, uh, actually, actually, I have, I have, uh, I have discussed that... Uh, uh, these provisions are not applicable upon voluntary liquidation process as well as the liquidation uh, process under IBC. 
so these no. provisions it means these provisions are applicable upon only only on the liquidation proceedings which have been carried on under the in uh, companies act 2013 acha acha okay sir okay right acha uh, the last one is except yeah, the last one of except the provisions of insolvency and bankruptcy notwithstanding anything contrary uh, why i have discussed these provisions because if you have been appointed as the provisional liquidator which uh, the provision says under the under section 271 of the uh, companies act 2013 then you will have to uh, okay understood sir understood yes. right understood okay thank you okay now the registers and books of accounts which are required to be maintained uh, in relation to liquidation of the corporate uh, person these are the registers and books cash book ledger bank ledger register of fixed assets and inventories securities and investment register register of book debts and outstanding debt uh, debts tenant ledger suits ledger decree ledger ledger of uh, claims and dividends contributories ledger distributions ledger, register fee register suspense register documents register books register register of unclaimed dividends and undistributed proceeds this has been this has been included with fact from 1st 15th january 2020 such other books and registers as may be necessary to account for transaction of ct all the aforesaid registers and books are maintained in the form in schedule 2 these are the uh, these the books and registers are given in form uh, in the form schedule 2 with the necessary modifications as per the requirement of the liquidator so you can also modify the registers but as per your requirement and these registers are given in schedule two of the voluntary liquidation process regulations now engagement of professionals regulation 11 says that liquidator may engage professionals to assist him at reasonable remuneration and such remuneration shall form part of the liquidation cost so you 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 can uh, engage professionals to assist you, your you, uh, to to assist you in the voluntary liquidation uh, process liquidator shall not engage a professional who is his relative or related party of ct or has served as an auditor to ct at any time during the 5 years preceding the liquidation commencement date so you will have to keep in mind that you will not engage any professional who is re your relative and your the related party of ct and served as auditor of ct in the during the last 5 years professional engaged or proposed to be engaged shall disclose the existence of pecuniary or personal relationship with any of the stakeholders or cp as soon as he becomes aware of it to the liquidator so during his engagement if, if he or she comes to know that i have been uh, uh, that, that there is some existence of any pecuniary or personal relationship with the with any of the stakeholders of the cp so he will have to inform to the liquidator now consultation with the stakeholders regulation 12 says that liquidator has power to consult any of the stakeholders entitled for distribution of the proceeds under section 53 so stakeholders are so 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 the, the liquidator can consult any of the stakeholders Liqu uh, the stakeholders consulted under section 35 subsection 2 shall extend all the assistance and cooperation to the liquidator to complete the liquidation process of ct so they will give all type of assistance and cooperation the liquidator shall maintain the particulars of any consultation with stakeholders made under these regulations so if there is any uh, consultation uh, with the stakeholders so uh, the liquidator will have to maintain the particulars of those consultation that may be in the form of uh, minutes uh, and that may be for in the in the form of any note extortionate credit transactions regulation 13 says that extortionate credit transaction under section 50 means where term of receiving financial or operational debt within 2 years preceding the insolvency as a commencement date require the cp to make exorbitant payment in respect of financial or operational debt received so if the cp has received any financial or operational debt in the last 2 years and the terms of receiving that uh, financial or operational debt says that uh, that require the cp to make exorbitant payment 
that is that comes under the definition of extortionate mm. credit transactions and those transactions are unconscionable under the principle of law relating to contracts so related to a principle of law relating to contract if they, those are exorbitant means if they, they uh, if suppose 5% or 7% or 9% rate of interest is going on and that uh, terms and conditions says that 15 20% discount interest will be paid so that is exorbitant that is a extortionate credit transaction section 50 subsection 2 says the board may specify the circumstances in which the transaction shall be covered under section 50 subsection 1 so any debt extended by any person providing financial services which is in compliance with the law for the time being in force in relation to such rates shall in no event be considered as extortionate credit transactions. So, the, 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 uh, this was related to extortionate credit, credit transactions which we will have to keep in mind while, while uh, going through the voluntary liquidation process. Now, Chapter 5 deals with the claims, Regulation 15 to 19. So, when you will uh, publish in the two newspapers and you will uh, seek the claims within 30 days from the date of uh, liquidation commencement date, then any person can find the claims uh, with you uh, being, being the liquidator of that corporate person. So, person who claims to be stakeholder shall prove his claim for debt or dues to him, including interest, if any, on the liquidation commencement date. He will prove the proof of claim to be sent in the following manner. Number one, in case of operational creditor other than the workman employee, he shall submit, he or she shall submit the proof of claim to the liquidator in person by post or electronic means in forum B of schedule one. So forum B of schedule one is given in the regulations. So if person is operational creditors other than workman and employee, then he, he can uh, send the claim and submit the claim to the liquidator in person by post or electronic means in forum B. And in case of financial creditor, forum C of schedule one, but in electronic means only, shall submit proof of claim to the liquidator in electronic means. Regulation says in electronic means, but in case of uh, operational creditor in person by post or electronic means but here only in, elect in electronic means. In case of workmen or employees, he shall submit the proof of claim to the liquidator in person or by post or electronic means in form D of schedule one. And in case of numerous workmen or employees, an authorized representative may submit one proof of claim for all dues on their behalf in forum E of schedule one. Person claiming to be stakeholders other than a foresight means the person is not either non neither neither operational creditor nor financial creditor nor workman or employee nor new, um, uh, then the stakeholder will submit proof of claim to the liquidator in person by post or electronic means in forum F of schedule one. Now basis for of proof of claim. So how the uh, the uh, person will pr prove his claim? Basic, what, what would be the basis? In case of operational creditor, the existence of debt may be proved on the basis of record available with the information ut utility, contract for supply of goods with corporate person along with invoice demanding payment for the same to the CP, order of a court or tribunal that adjudicated upon the non-payment of debt, if any, and financial accounts of CP. So if these documents are required to be enclosed, so whatever documents the, the, uh, if the CP is having, so that will have to be filed along with the form B. In case of financial creditors, the existence of debt may be proved on the basis of records available with the information utility, Financial contract supported by financial statements record evidencing that amounts committed by the financial creditor to CP under a facility has been drawn by the CP. 
the financial statement showing that debt has not been repaid till now and order of the court or tribunal that has adjudicated upon the non-payment of debt, if any. So, in case of financial creditors, the existence of debt can be proved by annexing the following documents. Any of the following documents upon which the claimant uh, uh, rely. Now, now, in case of workmen and employees, the existence of debt may be proved on the basis of records available with the information utility. This is common in all. The proof of employment, such as contract of employment for the period of claim, notice demanding payment of unpaid amount or any other proof that payment has not been made, order of the court or tribunal that has been adjudicated upon non-payment of debt, if any. This is also common in all. Liquidator shall admit claims of the workman or employee on the basis of books of accounts of CP if such workman or employee has not made any claim. So, on the basis of books of accounts, the liquidator can admit the claims of workman or employee only, not, not for other persons. Now, in case of other stakeholders, for, uh, for, for, for with the forum F that has been provided, the existence of debt may be proved on the basis of records available with the information utility. The documentary evidence of the notice demanding the payment of unpaid amount or bank statement of the claimant showing that claim has, claim has not been paid along with an affidavit that documentary evidence and bank statement are true, valid and genuine. So these documents are required to be filed by the other stakeholders. Third one, documentary evidence or electronic evidence of his shareholding. So for this, so this, 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 so this uh, all the shareholders, they are also the stakeholders. So they will have to file the claims with the liquidator in form F. Right, sir. Sir, a small question here, sir. Please, please. Actually. The claim of shareholder will be determined only upon uh, discharge of liabilities and uh, upon uh, sale of assets and discharge of liabilities. Right. How much at the end of uh, the liquidation, how much amount was there? But right. how this shareholder will claim his amount now? No, no, no. Now they, 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 no, no they will file their claim. So the uh, so it depends upon the amount uh, remaining in the hands of the liquidator whether that 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 that, that uh, uh, amount can be paid to the shareholders or not. That will be paid uh, uh, in proportionate to the shareholders. If it's any amount is, sir. if I'm any if any amount remains. Correct, correct. The, that uh, that means uh, he cannot uh, mention that amount. To the shareholder. Pardon. Whether the shareholder has to mention the face value of that amount? Yeah, yeah definitely. Or... Definitely, they will face. They, they will claim their amount that uh, because because if any amount remains left at the Correct. end of the at, at the uh, after paying all the liabilities, then uh, the the shareholders are liable to as per section fifty three. Correct, correct, sir. But uh, okay, uh, estimatedly they have they can file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can file uh, in face value. Okay, okay, sir. Right, right. Order of the court or tribunal that has adjudicated upon non payment of debt, if any. This is also common in all. Now, proof of security in trust under Regulation 20 says that the existence of security in trust may be proved by a secured creditor on the basis of number one, records available with the information utility. Certificate of registration of charge issued by the registrar of companies. So, if the, if the CP or the LLP is there or any other uh, uh, person, uh, then they, 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 they can also provide certificate of registration of charge. The proof of registration of charge with Central Registry of Securitization, Asset Reconstruction and Security Interest of India. So, here in, in, with this uh, institution, the, uh, the charge can be registered. Any other relevant documents which adequately establish this security interest? So, any other relevant documents if the uh, uh, any any creditor have security creditor, they, uh, so they can uh, they, they can also submit those documents with the liquidator. 
production of uh, bills of exchange and promissory note. So if there is any bills of exchange or promissory note, that can also be submitted. Proof of debt in respect of bill of exchange, promissory note, or any other negotiable instrument or security of like nature for which CP is liable. Such instruments shall be produced before the liquidator before the claim is admitted. So these, these, these so these are also you can say the uh, the the claims. Substantiation of claims. Now liquidator may call for such other evidence or clarification as he may he deems fit from the claimant for substantiating the whole or part of its claim. So even after filing the above documents. Liquidator may call for further evidence or any other clarification from the claim. Now, cost of proof of claims, who will bear the cost? Regulation 23 says the claimant shall bear the cost of proving its claim. Now, cost for verification determination of the claim incurred by the liquidator shall be part of the liquidation cost. So, if the liquidator is verifying and determining the claims, and if he is expending anything on, um, on these, then that cost will be part of the liquidation cost. If the claim found to be false, suppose a person files any claim and that claim found to be false, then the liquidator shall endeavor to recover the costs incurred for verification and determination of the claim from that claimant and shall provide the details of the claimant to the board. So this is the provision that he will provide the details of that claimant to the IBBI. Determination of, quant of quantum of claim, Regulation 24 says, where the amount of claim by the claimant is not precise due to any contingency or any other reason, the liquidator shall make the best estimate of the amount of the claim based on the consultation with the claimant and CP and the information available with him. So I will make the best estimate of the amount of the claim. Now valuation of debt in foreign currency. So if, they, if the company is having any debt in foreign currency, Regulation 25 says claims denominated in foreign currency shall be valued in Indian currency at the official exchange rate on the liquidation commencement date. So Whatever would be the uh, official uh, exchange rate as on the liquidation commencement date means the passing of the resolution or approval of the resolution by the creditors on that date. So whatever the official exchange rate will be there, that will be valued in the Indian, Indian currency on that exchange rate. Official exchange rate means the, is the reference rate published by RBI or derived from the from such reference rates. Now. Chapter 5 deals with the claims. So periodical claims are there. Just like in case of rent, interest or such other payment of periodical nature, the person may claim only for any amounts due and unpaid up to the liquidation commencement date. Means the person cannot claim any amount after the liquidation commencement date. So up to the liquidation commencement date, whatever rent, interest or other payment is due that the person can in the liquidation process, pro, uh, pro, pro, voluntary liquidation process. Now, debt payable at future date. So, person may prove claim whose payment was not yet due on liquidation commencement uh, date is entitled to distribution the, in the same manner as any other stakeholder as per the formula which is given here. Now, mutual credits and set-offs. In case of mutual dealing with the sir, CP and sir, the... sir, can you light a little throw on this uh, with this small example, sir? Debt payable at future time. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Actually, uh, in case of uh, uh, suppose, if if any amount that has not become due today, on the date of liquidation commencement date, right? Yes. And that that is that is due suppose uh, uh, three months later on or two months later on. Or 12 okay. months later on. Then here X means is the value of the admitted claim. So X means the value of the admitted X claim. X by 1 plus R. Okay. R, R is the closing yield rate, yield rate of the government securities of the 
maturity of n of the date of the distribution as published by the reserve bank of india right and n okay. is the period beginning with the date of distribution and ending with the date on which the payment of debt would otherwise be due expressed in years and months in a decimal form i have calculated uh, at well uh, so if i have uh, i have if, if i have to if i have to take uh, 3000 after a period of 12 months what i will get today acha it is nothing but uh, but, time I get, of my... but i will get as on the liquidation commencement date okay okay right sir so this, this you, will have you. to be calculated by, by applying this formula thank you thank you sir. okay now mutual credits and set off in case of mutual dealings uh, between the cp and another party the sums due from one party shall be set off against the sum due from the other to arrive at the net amount payable to the CP or the other party. Right? So mutual set of and credits that, that, that are allowed under the claims. Now verification of claims, Regulation 29 says, liquidator shall verify the claims submitted within 30 days from the last date of receipt of claims. So you will have to verify the claims within 30 days. After verification, the liquidator may either admit or reject the claim in whole or as part of the uh, or reject the claim in whole or part as the case may be as per section 40 of the code. So after receiving the claim, if the liquidator founds that this the, uh, this claim can be admitted, uh, this claim is, uh, is, uh, is fulfilling all the requirements that can be admitted, he will admit the claim. And if the liquidator thinks that uh, after verifying the claim, that uh, uh, this claim uh, cannot be admitted, so he will reject the claim in whole or in part as per section 40 of the code. And if the liquidator rejects any claim, then he shall record the reasons for rejection in writing so as liquidator, you will have to record the reasons for rejection, rejection in writing. You cannot uh, say anything verbally. So you will have to record each and everything in writing. So if you if you are going to reject the claim, liquidator shall communicate his decision for admission or rejection of the claims to the creditors and corporate debtor within seven days. So whether the claim is admitted or whether the claim is rejected, so within seven days, from the date of admission or rejection, the liquidator will have to communicate to his decisions to the stakeholder. The creditor may appeal to the, now when the claim is rejected in whole or in part, then what the creditor will do? Creditor may appeal to the adjudicating authority against the decision of the liquidator within 14 days of receipt of such decision as per section 42 of the code. So he will he can uh, file uh, a petition before the uh, um, NCLT for uh, getting the claim approved. Now regulation thirty says list of stakeholders. Now liquidators shall prepare a list of list of stakeholders on the basis of proof of claim submitted and accepted. So whatever the claims have been admitted by the liquidator, so he will prepare a list of the stakeholders. So what he will write and accepted with amounts of claims admitted, if any, extent to which the debts and dues are secured or unsecured, you will write these details of the stakeholders and proof of claims admitted or rejected in part or rejected wholly. So you will have to prepare the list of the stakeholders. Now liquidator shall prepare such list within 45 days from the last date of receipt of the claims. So we'll have to prepare the list within 45 days. Provided that where no claim is received till the last date of receipt of claim, then liquidator shall prepare the list of stakeholders within 15 days from the last date of receipt of claims. So if, there are, if, the, if the company is not has been receiving any claim, then 15 days in time is required to prepare the list of stakeholders. If the liquidator is receiving the uh, claims, then within 45 days from the last date for receipt of the claims. 
Now, Regulation 30 says list of stakeholders as modified from time to time shall be available for inspection by the person submitted proof of claims and available for inspection by the members, partners, directors and guarantors of CP. So these list of stakeholders is available for inspection by the person submitting proof of claims, members, partners, directors, guarantors of CP and that list of stakeholders is required to be displayed on the website of the corporate person or, designate, or designated by the IBBI for this purpose. So this list of stakeholders is available for inspection and must be displayed on the website of the corporate person or provided by the IBBI. Now realization of assets, regulation 31 to 33 says that manner of sale, so liquidator may value and sell the assets of CP in the manner and mode approved by CP in compliance with the provisions if any in the applicable statute. So liquidator may well, who has valued the asset and he may sell the asset but in the manner and mode approved by a corporate person. The assets includes an asset, single asset, all assets, set of assets, parcel of assets as the case may be in relation to the sale of assets as per regulation 31. Now the recovery of money, money is due. Liquidator shall endeavor to recover and realize all the assets and dues to the CP in a time bound manner for maximization of the value for the stakeholders. So if there are suppose assets are standing in, 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 in the company or fixed assets are there, uh, current assets are there, so liquidator shall endeavor to recover and realize those assets uh, in a time bound manner. Now realize uncalled capital or uncalled capital contribution. So this is important in case of company. Liquidator shall realize the amount due from the contributory to the CP. So if, 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 the, if the contributory is there and that contributory has uh, declared that he will contribute uh, in the event of winding up of the company, so liquidator shall realize that amount from the contributory. The liquidator shall be entitled to call and realize the uncalled capital and arrears. So if the company is having uncalled called capital or arrears, then the liquidator shall be entitled to call that uh, and realize that uncalled capital and arrears. If any dues on call made prior to the liquidation commencement date of the CP by providing a notice to the contributor. He will give a notice to the contributor to make the payment within 15 days from the receipt of notice. And in case of calls are encumbered or charged, means there is if there is any lien on the calls, then liquidator shall hold all the monies realized subject to right of the holder of any such charge or encumbrance. <clears throat> no distribution shall be made to the contributor unless he makes his contribution towards the uncalled or unpaid capital as required in the constitutional documents of the CP. So, if any contributor says that in the event of winding up of the company, I will make this much of contribution and even if giving the, uh, by, even, 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 even if after uh, the receipt, receiving the notice from the liquidator, that person, uh, that contributor is not uh, contributing, then he will not get any distribution uh, from the liquidator in the liquidation process. Proceeds of liquidation and distribution. Re Regulation 34. Monies to be paid into the bank account. So whatever the amounts you are receiving uh, by sale of assets uh, or from the uh, recovery, then liquidator uh, for, for that purpose, the liquidator will have to open a bank account in the name of a corporate person followed by the words in voluntary liquidation. So this is required as per law. In any scheduled bank for the receipt of all monies due to the CP. Liquidator shall pay to the credit of the bank account open under sub-regulation 1 all monies 
including check and demand draft received by him as liquidator of the CP. So he will have to pay to the credit of bank, that bank account all the money is received. Realization of each day shall be deposited into the bank account without any deduction. So you need so you so you are so you cannot make any deduction from the receipt. So if you have if you have made any expenditure, so you cannot say that I have I suppose you have made expenditure of rupees twenty and you are receiving rupees hundred realization rupees hundred. So you okay I I I can deposit rupees eighty because twenty I have expended. No, you will have to deposit the total amount rupees hundred. And 20 is your the liquidation cost into the bank without deduction, not later than next working day. So if you are receiving whatever amount you are receiving today, you will have to deposit into the bank by tomorrow. Money in the credit of bank account shall not be used except in accordance with section 53. So whatever money that has been in the credit of the bank account, you, you cannot use that money except distribution as per section 53, that is waterfall mechanism. All payments above 5,000 rupees shall be made by check, drawn or online banking transactions against the bank account. So, now distribution and return of money. Regulation 35 and Regulation 36 says that Regulation 35 says within 30 days from the receipt of amount. So, distribution and return of money distribution has to be made within a period of 30 days. Earlier it was six months. Now, with the fact from 5th April 2022, the period has been reduced to 30 days from six months. Deduction of liquidation cost before distribution. You can do this. With the approval of CP, distribution of an asset that cannot be readily or advantageously sold due to its peculiar nature or other special circumstances amongst the stakeholders. So, with the approval of CP, you can distribute that asset. Now, return of money revolution 36 says, stakeholders shall immediately return money received in distribution for which he was not entitled. So, if any stakeholders have received any money to which he was not entitled, so he will have to return that money to the liquidator immediately. Now, tax liability under the Income Tax Act 1961. As per Section 2, Subsection 22C, so if you are making distribution of the proceeds in liquidation process, then you will have to check these provisions also. And you will have to keep in mind these provisions also. As per Section 2, Subsection 22C in the Income Tax Act 1995, any distribution made to the shareholders of the company in on its liquidation to the extent to which distribution is attributable to the accumulated profits of the company immediately before its liquidation, whether capitalized or not, shall be deemed a dividend. This is the provision of the Income Tax Act. Right? Now, with the uh, example, I will uh, uh, discuss this provision. On deemed dividend, TDS at the rate of 10% is payable under Section 194 of Income Tax Act. Now, this is the example. <coughs> For example, paid up share capital of XYZ company in voluntary liquidation is 50 lakh rupees. Suppose amount realized from the assets of the company is rupees 80 lakhs. So, it means you have received more than the paid up share capital. After payment of liabilities, amount available for distribution to the stakeholders is 75 lakh rupees. Now 50 lakh is the repayment of the capital only and the amount above 50 lakh that is 2 lakh 50, 25 lakh will be the deemed dividend as per this as per section 2 subsection 22c of the income tax act and on such amount TDS of rupees 2 lakh 50 thousand that is 10 percent of the amount shall be paid. So you will have to keep in mind while going through the money liquidation process. Achha, simple no. calculation. There is no capital gains, nothing. The, the, no, capital gains will be in the hands of the uh, recipient. Right? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> to, to deduct... That means two, time, two times effect is there here. In, you, are, you are deducting only TDS. 
That is very small amount, 10%, right? To deduct and deposit, TDS is the responsibility of the liquidator only, right? Now, shareholders are subject to capital gains tax under section 46, subsection 1 of the assets distributed or money received after deducting deemed dividend under section 222C from the money received or fair market value of the asset as on the date of distribution, right? Now, reporting, this very important regulation 8 says, submission of preliminary report to the corporate person. Now, this preliminary report is required to be submitted to the corporate person, not to ROC, not to IBBI, within 45 days from the liquidation commencement date. Detailing, what, did, what, what you will have to detail in capital structure of CP. Now, estimates of assets and liabilities as on the liquidation commencement date on the basis of books of C, uh, corporate person, if the liquidator has reasons to believe that books of CP are not reliable, then such estimates based on the reliable reports and data otherwise available to the liquidator. So he will make the estimates of the assets and liabilities. Whether he intends to make any further inquiry into the matter relating to the promotion, formation or failure of the CP or conduct of business thereof, so he will have to mention in the preliminary report. Proposed plan. Achha, one second, sir. Please. If you read 3C, 91C, promotion, formation, or failure hmm. uh, of the corporate person or the conduct of the business there. The, what what is the tent amounts to failure, sir? When a when a healthy company is going for voluntary liquidation. No, no. No, no. He says whether he intends to make any inquiry, further inquiry into the matter relating to the promotion, formation or failure of CP. Means if a CP is bypassing special resolution, oh. not on the occurrence of any event or not on the on the on any on any event which has been given in the constitutional document. So if uh, if the if he uh, if the if the CP if the liquidator makes to inquiry into any and any matter relating to the promotion formation or failure of CP, say failure of if he wants to make any inquiry, whether if he, if he, if he gets a mail from the from the from any uh, information uh, that uh, okay. the CP, CP the CP is going to be close to defraud any person. Uh -huh. yes yes. Right, so he can make inquiry into the matter. Okay. Right? Now, right, sir. Thank you. Now, proposed plan of action for carrying out li uh, liquidation along with the estimates of liquidation cost and timeline within which he proposes to carry it out. Right? So, he will have to he will have to uh, give, give these, these details in the preliminary report. Now, preliminary report regulation 9 says liquidator shall prepare and submit preliminary report Status report. Status report has been included with the fact from 31st January 2024. Minutes of the consultation with the stakeholders and final report in the manner specified under regulation. So, liquidator shall prepare the preliminary report, status report, minutes and final report as per the manner in the manner specified in the regulations. Liquidator shall make available the uh, aforesaid reports and minutes to the stakeholders either in electronic or physical form on receipt of application in writing and cost of making such report available to them. So liquidator, it is the duty of the liquidator, but he will obtain an undertaking from the stakeholders that he shall maintain confidentiality of such reports and shall not use the same to cause an undue gain or loss itself or, or to any other person. So he will obtain this undertaking from the shareholders while giving that information. Liquidators shall endeavor com to complete the liquidation process and submit his final report within 270 days from the liquidation commencement date where creditors have approved the resolution. It means if the corporate person is having creditors, then final report 
shall be submitted. Uh, he will make endeavor to submit the final report within 270 days. But if the company is not having creditors, then 90 days from the liquidation commencement date in all other cases. This is with effect from 5th April 2022. Earlier, the period was 12 months. Now, if the liquidation process continues for more than 270 days or 90 days, then what the liquidator will do? The liquidator shall hold the meeting of the contributories within 15 days from the end of 270 days or 90 days as the case may be. And thereafter, at the end of every succeeding 270th day or 90th day from the liquidation commencement date till submission of the application for dissolution to the CP. So he will hold the meeting every uh, end of the every 270th day uh, within 15 days, right? Or 90, 90th day, which uh, uh, within 15 days, the meeting of the contributories will be held. And liquidator shall make an status report ind indicating progress in the liquidation. So he will make the status report by, by holding the meeting of the stakeholders after 270 days or, or 90, uh, 90 days, which includes the settlement of the list of the stakeholders, how much stakeholders have been settled, and details of any assets remains unsold or unrealized distribution of proceeds and unsold assets made to stakeholders, developments in any material litigation by or against the CP, filing of and developments in the applications for avoidance of undervalued transactions in accordance with Chapter 3, Part 2 of the Code. And reasons for not completing the process within the time stipulated an additional time required for completing the process. So, status in in, in status, status report, he will mention all, all 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 these details. Status report shall enclose the audited accounts showing receipt and payments of the liquidation since the liquidation commencement date. So, status in status, status report, the audited accounts showing receipt and payment since the liquidation commencement date that is required to be annexed. The liquidator shall file status report within with the board within seven days of the meeting with the contributors. So it is the duty of liquidator to file the status report within seven days to IBBI. Now form VL2. Again, we have come to the form forms. Form VL2, details of the meeting of the contributors, the form up. So once you have crossed the limits of 270 days or 90 days and you are holding the meetings of the contributories. So after the meeting of the contributories, details of the meeting of the contributories with the reasons for delay in the process and details of the replacement of the liquidator, if any. So the forum VL2 is required to be filed. And when is this forum is required to be filed? on or before 10th day of the subsequent month. I will discuss it later on. VL2 includes the details of the meetings of the contributories with the reasons for delay in the process. Number one. Number two, replacement of the liquidatory fan. VL2 to be filed at IBBA site on or before 10th day of subsequent month after the meeting of the contributories or replacement of the liquidator. Now, after login at the IBBA site, go to the dashboard, VL forms. Then after that, select VL2 and start filling form. Now I will uh, show you how this form can be filled.
Now, this is the uh, after login. You will uh, see this screen on your screen board. Now, close this and then go to the dashboard. When you will go to the dashboard, voluntary liquidation forms will be there. Now, in this is a forum VL2. So name of the in forum D VL2, you will have to file the name uh, name of the uh, corporate debtor, SIN number of the corporate debtor or LLPI number, whatever uh, the uh, whatever the CP is, details of the meeting, date of the meeting. So when you will hold the meeting with the contributors, the date of meeting, you will have to fill here the date of the meeting. Reasons for not completing the process within the stipulated time. Copy of the minutes of the meeting of the contributors. You will have to choose file. You will have to select the file and then you will have to annex the minutes, copy of the minutes. Whether there is any delay in conducting the meeting of the contributors as mandated under regulation 37. If yes, you will have to say yes. Then you will have to specify the reasons. If no, then you will have to select no. Whether liquidator was replaced, yes. If, uh, if you have replaced the liquidator, then date of replacement and reasons for replacement of the earlier liquidator. If no, then you will have to uh, click on the no. Now attachments, copy of the annual status report after 270 days or 90 days uh, when, when you will uh, uh, call the meeting. Then date of copy of the annual status report any other relevant documents, if any, date of the document, any other document which you want to annex, then preview and submit. And then after e-signing or digital signatures, you can file this document with the IBBI, right? So now uh, coming again to the uh, just, just hold on. Sir, probably this contributory meetings will arise and only in two cases, no? Yes, in two cases. If One you is a change of uh, uh, if, uh, if you cross the limits of 270 days or 90 days. Yes. 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 No. This is related to forum VL2. Now final report. On completion of the liquidation process, liquidator shall prepare final report. So once the liquidation process has been completed, the liquidator shall prepare final report and final report will consist of audited accounts showing receipt and payments of the liquidation since the liquidation commencement date, right? Number one. Number two, statement demonstrating assets of the CP has been dis disposed of. Debts of CP has been discharged to the satisfaction of the creditors. No litigation is pending against CP or sufficient provision has been made to meet or the obligations arising from the pending litigations. And the sales statement with regard to all the assets reflecting realized value, cost of realization, manner and mode of sale, person to whom the sale has been made. These are to be, these all a sales statement with regard to asset that is to be mentioned in the final report. Explanation for shortfall if realized value is less than the registered value. So if the realized value is, the, is less than the registered value, then the liquidator will have to give explanation, right? Liquidator shall submit final report and compliance certificate in forum H. Forum H is very important because when you will uh, file the uh, petition with the, uh, with the uh, NCLT, though the NCLT members, they ask for, for they, they, uh, they uh, used to ask for the, uh, for forum, of H in compliance certificate and this they check each and every uh, point of the uh, forum H that is compliance certificate. So the liquidator Sorry, 
yes sir with roc in which form we will submit sir gnl2 gnl2 yes okay. with roc form gnl2 right टाइमलाइंस Uh, which are uh, mentioned in the in the in the whole process which i have uh, compiled uh, here so these are the timelines and uh, we, we can discuss these timelines the uh, declaration from the majority of the, the directors partners regarding solvency of corporate person uh, t is the date on which the uh, the liquidation commencement date t means the liquidation commencement date so Uh, before liquidation commencement date, in within twenty for twenty eight days before uh, liquidation commencement date, the declaration of majority of directors that is required, and date of passing of the resolution or special resolution by the members partners about commencement of voluntary liquidation process, and appointment of insolvency professional as liquidator. So this is T on the liquidation commencement date. approval of the approval of the creditors representing 2/3 in value of the debt that is t plus 7 within 7 days from the uh, approval of the shareholder special resolution within 7 days the corporate person will have to get the approval of the uh, creditors now intimation by the insolvency provision regarding the appointment as liquidator to rbbi within 7 days from the date of commencement of uh, liquidation public announcement in form a by the liquidator within 5 days the notification to the registrar of companies and the board about the resolution passed by under section 59 this is uh, within 7 days or if the resolution has been passed by the liquidator uh, sorry by the creditors then within 14 days submission of claims within 30 days withdrawal modification of claims by the stakeholders within for 44 to 4 days from the date of commencement of uh, liquidation submission of preliminary report for within 45 days from the uh, commencement of the liquidation verification of claims within 60 days from the uh, and uh, intimation about the decision of acceptance or rejection of claims within 67 days preparation of list of list of stakeholders that is 45 days or 75 days uh if if the company is having uh stake uh, the uh, the uh, creditors creditors then 75 within, 40, within ha uh, creditors within 75 days otherwise within 45 days 45. appeal by the creditor under section 42 within uh, 81 days distribution of the proceeds to the stakeholders by the liquidator date of realization within 30 days earlier it was 6 months deposit of uh, amount of un, uh, unclaimed dividends and distribution i will discuss is uh, discussing my uh, uh, in next slides if the if the if there are if the, 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 there is any unclaimed dividends or undistributed proceeds then the what what would what would be the application now submission of final report to the board and ibbi 90 days or 270 days submission of final report along with application for dissolution of uh, to to adjudicating authority uh, then completion of voluntary liquidation process within 90 to 70 days meeting of the contributors and presentation of annual status report within 15 days from the end of 90 or 270 days which we have which we have discussed now application to adjudicating authority section 59 subsection 7 8 and 9 Section fifty nine, subsection seven says where affairs of C C P have been completely wound up and its assets completely liquidated, the liquidator shall make an application to the adjudicating authority seeking the orders of the adjudicating authority for dissolution under section fifty nine, subsection eight. The copy of the order under subsection eight when the dissolution order have been that that has been passed by the adjudicating authority. the copy of the order 
of uh, shall be filed with the ROC within fourteen days from the date of such order. Now, what, how that order is required to be filed with the ROC? There is a form from INC twenty eight one to uh, INC yeah. twenty eight under the Companies Act two thousand thirteen. So, in that form. The order of adjudicating authority is required to be filed with ROC within 14 days. So this, this has to be keep in mind. Now, unclaimed proceeds or undistributed assets of the liquidation. So what is the uh, what are the provisions? Regulation 39 says the IVBI shall operate and maintain an account to be called. Corporate Voluntary Liquidation Account (CLV) account in the public accounts of India. So, IVBA shall operate and maintain the account. This is called Corporate Voluntary Liquidation Account, right? In public accounts of India, the liquidator shall deposit the amount of unclaimed dividends, undistributed proceeds, if any, along with any income earned thereon, till the date of deposit or holds any amount on the date of commencement of IBBI, VLP Amendment Regulation 2 2020, he will deposit these amounts within 15 days before the submission of application to adjudicating authority. So we'll have to deposit all these claims before 15 days, uh, before the submission of application to adjudicating authority. If the liquidator fails to deposit these amounts, then the shame shall be deposited along with 12% interest per annum thereupon from the due date and deposit of the deposit till the date of deposit. So 12% rate of interest who will pay? Definitely the liquidator will pay because these are the unclaimed dividends and undistributed proceeds. There is nothing else left with the Liquidator. So, liquidator will have to pay from his own pocket 12% rate of interest per annum. So, if he fails to deposit, the liquidator shall submit the evidence of deposit of the amount to ROC and IDBI. So, he will have he will have to submit the evidence of deposit that I have deposited the above amount with the uh, in the in the in the corporate voluntary liquidation account uh, of IBBI in the public accounts of India, and that that, that uh, that's uh, that, that evidence is to be submitted with the registrar of companies as well as insolvency and bankruptcy board of India, and a statement in form G, setting forth the nature of deposit along with the name and address of the stakeholder. Entitled to receive the unclaimed dividend or undistributed proceed. So, but is it again in uh, GNL2, sir? Sorry? Is it again in form GNL2? No, 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 no. In a, sta a statement in form G, sir. In form G. No, no. Form G as per uh, IBC, okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yes, uh... yes, yes, in form GNL2. In form GNL2. Oh. This form G will be filed with the IBBI as well as uh, with the ROC. With the ROC, definitely Forum G will not be uploaded because the Forum G is not given uh, in uh, uh, Companies Act forms. So for Companies Act form, you will have to uh, annex this Forum G with the uh, Forum G and ah, yes. right? Liquidator shall be entitled to get receipt from the board of for any amount deposited into the said account. So liquidator, can get the receipt from the board that I have deposited this amount with the corporate voluntary liquidation account in, in the public accounts of India. Now, unclaimed proceeds or undistributed assets of the liquidation, regulation 39.7A to E, these have been amended with effect from 31st January 2024. Prior to the dissolution of CP, a stakeholder who claims to be entitled to any amount deposited into the CLV account. So prior to the dissolution of CP, he may he or she may apply to the liquidator in form I for withdrawal of the amount. So if any claimant comes later on, a stakeholder comes later on and says that I am entitled to this amount and he applies in form I to the liquidator, then what the liquidator will do? Liquidator will 
verify that form and and liquidator shall request the board to release that amount to uh, to him for distribution to the stakeholder on receipt of the request the board may release the amount of the liquidator the liquidator after making distribution shall intimate to adjudicating authority for such distribution that the i board uh, i have verified the form um, the form i and the board has released the amount and the released amount that amount has been distributed so he will intimate to the adjudicating uh, adjudicating authority about the distribution after dissolution of cp a stakeholder may apply to the board in form i for an order for withdrawal of the amount now, in case uh, prior to the dissolution of CP, the stakeholder will apply to the liquidator. But after the dissolution of CP, the stakeholder may apply to the board directly. He will not come to the liquidator because liquidator role that has been gone. So after the dissolution of CP, stakeholder may apply to the board in, in the same form I for an order to for withdrawal of the amount. If any other person other than the stakeholder claims to be entitled to any amount shall submit evidence to satisfy the liquidator or the board regarding his entitlement. So, if the board is satisfied that stakeholder or the person other than the stakeholder is entitled to withdraw any amount from CVL account may make order in favor of that person. <coughs> right? Now, unclaimed proceeds or undistributed assets of the liquidation. Revolution 39 is continuing. Board shall maintain the corporate person wise ledger of the amount deposited or withdrawn from, from the account. So, this is the IBBA will maintain the corporate person wise ledger, right, of the amount deposited or withdrawn. For this purpose, the IBBA will nominate an officer not below the, uh, the level of executive director of the board as the custodian of the account and no proceeds shall be withdrawn without his approval. Maintain proper accounts and get the same audited annually and place before the governing board and shall be forwarded to the central government. Right? Amount deposited into the CLV account which remains unclaimed or dis undistributed and any income or interest received in the said account after the completion of 15 years from the dissolution of CP shall be transferred to the Consolidated Fund of India, right? Now, circumstances under which adjudicating authority may order for suspension of voluntary liquidation or detect... Uh, uh, Deduction of fraud or insolvency, right? So, if the liquidator is of the opinion that liquidation is being done to defraud any person, because this is the first uh, and foremost condition uh, under Section Fifty Nine that they that and they they will they that uh, the majority of the directors or majority of the designated partners. They will give in uh, the declaration of sol solvency, and in th that declaration of solvency, they will write that company is not being liquidated to defraud any person. So, if the liquidator is of the opinion that liquidation is being done to defraud any person, and CP will not be able to pay its debts in full from the proceeds of the assets to be sold in liquidation. Then he shall make an application to the adjudicating authority to suspend the process of liquidation and adjudicating authority may pass any such order as it deems fit. So suspension of voluntary liquidation uh, can be done by the uh, adjudicating authority on the application of liquidator if the liquidator okay. comes to know that these two conditions are not being fulfilled, which are, which is, which are the basic uh, terms and conditions for voluntary liquidation process. Now, forum VL3 at this stage, forum VL3 is required to be filed there. So, if the forum VL3 includes the details of dissolution application, right? 
unclaimed proceeds, realization and distribution made to the stakeholders, pending litigations, detection of fraud or insolvency if any. Forum 3 is to be filed at IBBA site on or before 10th day of the subsequent month after submission of dissolution application of CP or withdrawal or suspension of application for voluntary liquidation process to the adjudicating authority. So once you, when you file the dissolution application to, of the CP or for or, or, or any application for withdrawal or suspension of the application, then at that time forum V3 will trigger and forum VVL3 will be filed with the, with the, with the uh, uh, IBBI. After login to IBBA site, go to dashboard, select VL forms. After that, select forum VL3 and start filling. Now, I will go to the IBBI site and let you know how it, how it can be filled. Now, again, come to the dashboard and voluntary liquidation forms. Sir, if you want, then we can have a short break also. Okay, ji. Okay, 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 okay. So, for how much time we can have short break? 10 minutes. Okay, ji. Theek hai. Okay, so we will resume after 10 minutes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir.
should i start ma'am yes sir okay so we were discussing about the about form vl3 no vl3 vl3 form yes vl3 form just just one dash form So this is forum VL3. <coughs> Name of the corporate editor, just uh, the suppose corporate uh, and the sin of the corporate editor. Details of the application. Date of submission of the application for dissolution of the corporate person under section 59, subsection 7, with the adjudicating authority. And the application is filed for, for drop down. You will have to select either for dissolution, withdrawal, or suspension of the voluntary liquidation process. After that, zonal bench means with which bench you have filed the application. And the case type means voluntary liquidation under IBC, right? Case number, year of the case, whether it, whether it related to 2023 or 2024. Filing number and filing year, 2023-2024. Now, unclaimed proceeds, B part says, of un unclaimed proceeds, whether any proceeds deposited into the corporate voluntary liquidation account? If yes, then date of deposit, number of how much, uh, for how much number of the stakeholders you have deposited that amount and the amount uh, you have deposited. If no, then you will have to say no. Then you will have to click on no. Then details of realization during voluntary liquidation process. Cash, bank balance, you will have to mention here. Refund from statutory authorities. Sales of assets. How much you, amount you have uh, realized from the sale of assets. Realization of uncalled or unclaimed unpaid capital contribution value of unsold assets distributed any other specified this is total so all these all this information which which is required to be filled in form vl1 vl2 vl3 vl4 all this this um, uh, this information th that is required to be filled in form h simultaneously form h compliance certificate right now distribution made under section 53. Now how you have made the distribution, you will have to fill here. Insolvency resolution process, amount distributed, distributed as per section 53. Total amount remarks. Then liquidation cost, how much were the liquidation cost? Liquidator fee, excluding liquid, liquidator fees. Here third add number three, liquidator fees. Then how much you have paid to the secured creditors? Number of claimant, ab amount claimed, total amount admitted by the liquidator, amount distributed as per section 53 and remarks. Now, for how much amount you have distributed to the workman for 24 months preceding the liquidation commencement date? So, employees for 12 months preceding the liquidation commencement date, unsecured financial creditors, statutory dues, secured creditors who had enforced security interest, operational creditors rather other than employees, workmen or statutory authorities, any other creditors, preference shareholders and last one the equity shareholders, whatever the amount will be left that will be distributed to the uh, equity shareholders and how much amount you have distributed to the liquidity sh equity shareholders you will have to mention here the total amount uh, distributed by you will come here. 
Now, pending litigation, whether any litigation is pending as on the filing of the application for dissolution. If yes, then amount involved in litigation. Then the details of arrangement for handling litigation, including the provision for amount underlying the litigation post dissolution. If no, then you will have to select no. Detection of fraud or insolvency, whether liquidator is of the opinion that liquidation is being done to defraud any person. If you say yes date of filing of the application to suspend the process of liquidation. If no, then you will have to click on no. Whether liquidator is of the opinion that corporate person will not be able to pay its debts in full. If yes, then please mention the date of filing of the application to suspend the process of application. Otherwise, you will have to fill no. Now, attachments, copy of the final report date of copy date of, date of the uh, final report copy of application for dissolution or suspension or withdrawal complete application you will have to enclose here date of uh, copy of the application for dissolution or suspension of withdrawal copy of the compliance certificate form h now all these things you will have to enclose here date of copy of uh, compliance for form h any other relevant document, date of that document. So you will have to annex all these documents here and then preview and submit with digital signatures or e-signs. So this is with regard to forum VL3. Now, coming again to the PPT. Sir, excuse me, sir. Please. Sir, uh, one query, sir. This is relating to LIQ, uh, sorry, VL2, sir. Hmm. VL2. VL2, uh, it is not uh, regularly we need to file, no? Yes, it's yes, optional, yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes, only yes, yes. Is, only, yeah, only, only, it is only it is required to be filed when, when you will conduct the meeting of the stakeholders. Okay, okay. Or, or in case of replacement of the liquidator. Okay. Right. Okay, in in two okay. cases, you will have to file from VL2. Otherwise, you you need not to file from VL2. Because okay. if the if the if the meeting of the contributor, if you have completed the liquidation process within two seventy okay. days or within ninety days, as the case may be, then mm -hmm. uh, your v, form VL2 is not required to be filed. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, we, forum VL3 is uh, includes the details of dissolution application, unclaimed proceeds, realization and distribution made to the stakeholders I have discussed. Pending litigations, detection of fraud insolvency, VL3 is required to be filed at IBBI site on or before 10th day of the subsequent month after submission of dissolution application of CP or withdrawal or suspension of application for voluntary liquidation process to adjudicating authority. Right? <coughs> After login to IBBI, go to dashboard, select VL forms. After that, select VL3 and start filling work forum VL3. Now, forum VL4. Now, let me first discuss with forum VL4. Then uh, we will come to the... Uh, then go again to the dashboard. Just, just hold on. So go to the go again to the dashboard right and select voluntary liquidation process forms now in this case this vr4 is required to be filed for details of the order of dissolution means it will be filed after passing of the order of dissolution of the company by NCLT. Name of the corporate debtor, SIN number, details of the order, date of order for dissolution of the corporate person or withdrawal or suspension of the voluntary liquidation process. So if any order has been passed by the NCLT, then VL4 forum is required to be filed with IBBI. Date of uh, filing of the aforesaid order with ROC, applicable authority. So you will have to select the date on which you have filed that order with the ROC or any other applicable authority. 
whether any change in realization as provided in table C in VL3, if, uh, whether any change, if any change, then you will have to fill all these here. Please provide the revised realization made to the stakeholders, sale of assets, all these things. Or whether any change in the distribution as provided in table 3, then you will have to again fill this form. Right? If no, then simply you will have to select no. Whether any change in distribution as provided in table D of VL3, if yes, then you will have to fill that the information which we have discussed earlier in form VL3. Now attachments, copy of adjudicating authority order for dissolution of the corporate person or withdrawal or suspension of the voluntary liquidation process, that copy of the order you will have to annex here by choosing the file. Date of the order, yeah, you will have to fill the date of the order here. Copy of the details of any other important directions of adjudicating authority and the date of copy of details of any other important directions, any other relevant document, doc, documents, if any, you will have to annex that document here and you will have to write the date of that document. You will have to preview and submit with your digital signatures or e-signatures through your Aadhaar card. So uh, these are all, this, this is all about the uh, form VL4. Now coming back to the PPT. So VL form VL4 will includes the order of dissolution of CP, which includes the details of distribution proceeds, receipt and payment. Details required in this form is carried forward from VL3 and hence need to need not be filled again. So automatically this form will be uh, uh, the details will be filled automatically and it will be carried forward from VL3. And VL4 to be filed with IBBI and ROC in form INC 28 within 14 days of passing of the order for dissolution of CP or withdrawal or suspension of application for the voluntary liquidation process. So VL4 to be filed at IBBI side and with ROC the order 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 of uh, uh, NCLT will be filed with ROC in form INC 28 and it is to be filed within 14 days of passing of the order. After login at IBBI side, go to dashboard, select VL forms. After that, select for a VL4 and start filling with VL4 form. Now, this is all this was all about the voluntary liquidation process. Now, regulation 41 says that liquidator shall preserve the physical and electronic copy of the reports, registers, books of accounts for at least eight years after the dissolution of the corporate person either with himself or with an information utility. So for eight years, you will have to preserve the physical or electronic copy of the reports, registers and books of account. Means all the records are required to be preserved. There are some case laws on stay or withdrawal of uh, uh, liquidation. Honorable Allahabad High Court in the matter of uh, Dhankari Investment Limited versus Official Liquidator adjudicated that this power includes the power to stay the voluntarily winding up itself altogether when the court is satisfied that the causes for which the voluntarily winding up resol resolution was passed no longer exists. The company is not indebted to commercially uh, indebted and commercially solvent and a bona fide effort has been made to revive the company. Right? Court will, however, not act on mere change of the opinion of the members or contributories and would like to be satisfied with the change in the conditions in which such resolution is passed. This power should be exercised sparingly and only where it is just and beneficial and the expedient to do so. Right. So, further, in the matter of VB Prohit and Gadag, Jambu, Keshwara and another, the Karnataka High Court while disposing the application for staying the voluntary liquidation of the company observed if the shareholders have resolved to revive the company and make one more effort to start the cement factory, opportunity should not be denied to them. 
in these circumstances prayers in this application are granted so benefits of voluntary liquidation benefits of voluntary liquidation are what controlled exit exit from the market in a controlled manner minimizing disruptions and ensuring an organized distribution of assets right uh, through liquidator and through the uh, through uh, uh, following the procedure under vlp regulations transparency involvement of creditors and shareholders in the liquidation process thereby avoiding potential conflicts efficiency voluntary liquidation streamlines the winding up process enabling a quicker resolution compared to traditional methods stakeholder protection the interest of the creditors shareholders and other stakeholders are safeguarded through a regulated and fair process legal recognition the ibc provides a legal framework for voluntary liquidation offering legitimacy legitimacy to, to the process so these are the benefits of the liquidation of voluntary liquidation uh, thank you very much uh, this is all about the uh, voluntary liquidation process uh, section 59 and uh, regulations uh, 2017 voluntary liquidation process regulations thank you very much Oh. Questions, sir? I think sir left or is there? Mikhilji, sir, are you there? Yes, yes, yes. I'm in the, I'm there. Sir, participants want to ask the questions. Sir, can you tell me what amount of fee we can charge for medium size of voluntary liquidation, sir? No, no, sir. It, 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 actually, it depends upon case to case. So it is not uh, no, notified by IBBI that how much you can charge. Yeah, that's right. That's company. why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it depends upon you and depends upon uh, the uh, corporate person who is going to appoint you. <coughs> I say recently one of uh, my known person has, uh, he got one big voluntary liquidation. They have given, I think, 4 lakh fee per month, I think. So you can you it is a, it is between you and the CP. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is very big company. Achha, sir, one question, sir. Please, please. The manner of sale can be decided by the corporate person. Manner and mode, both. Manner and mode. Yes, yes, that that, that CP can decide because because uh, that 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 that. that uh, CP can say that uh, I want to sell my asset uh, through agents or through uh, bidding, bidding like system. It. So, so they can decide the mode, but they cannot decide the amount. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They can decide the manner and mode, but not the amount that uh, that uh, uh, that uh, minimum this amount is required. No, or maximum this amount is required. Achha, they can put a cap, a cap, no, sir? No, 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 no. They cannot put okay. any cap. Yeah. Usually, it will be market driven. This is market driven. And... This is market driven. Okay, okay, sir. <laughs> I think today's class is between you and me. <laughs> no, no, sir. I think everybody is there and everybody is listening. I hope. Correct, sir. Correct. Uh, sir, good evening. Uh, I just have one small question. Uh, yeah, please, sir, you're saying about the preservation of records. We need to preserve for eight years. Uh, yes. But uh, a recent amendment, uh, is it not uh, applicable for voluntary liquidation, sir? Because we have to make physical records for three years and uh, digital records for eight years. Ma'am, your that voice is not clear. Sir? Yes. 
no no my question i just have a doubt i i'm i need clarification whether that aman is not a good for volunteer because initially for everything we is it for 8 years but subsequently after the aman um only three years we need to make physical records and uh, yes electronic copy for 8 years and physical copy for 3 years yes sir so yes. that is applicable for voluntary liquidation also yes sir yes yes this is also applicable okay thank you sir yeah okay anjali madam yes sir i think we should conclude now Uh, let me ask the participants uh, if there are any questions. Okay. Uh, participants, if there are any questions, please ask. Otherwise, we will conclude. Two questions. Yes, so, shall we uh, shall we conclude now? Yes, no problem. Okay. Yes, madam. Thank you very much, Vishivji, sir, for giving your valuable time and sharing your knowledge about uh, VLs. Forms. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, you are requested to be shared our PPT. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Sir, please thank share you the very presentation. Much, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, please. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Anjali ma'am, can we leave meeting? Yes, sir. It is uh, end of now.